again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to Train Sim World 2. Your first look, or possibly second look at the game, depending on when these videos are going up and what video you're seeing first. So if you haven't checked out the London Underground Bakerloo line, make sure you check that one out. Coming soon on the channel, or out now, if you want to get a notice on that, make sure you smash subscribe and turn on the notification bell to all so you can see when more details come out about the game. This game coming out on August 20th will be available for pre-purchase at a 15% discount or available for $29.99 or $49.99 for the Deluxe Edition. The sand patch grade for the United States returns, which allows you to haul coal and other types of cargo and freight around, but also the German high-speed rail line to Köln and Frankfurt is available as well. The first time that we're seeing a German high-speed train, well, such as the ice, and of course, underground operations too for the London Underground Bakerloo line. That's going to be a lot of fun. So if you guys want to see more of this, make sure you click, tap, blow up, and destroy that like button for more trains and transport on the channel. I've really been enjoying Microsoft Flight Simulator lately, and this ties in with it perfectly as trains and planes go together well, as a lot of trains pull into airports. And of course, one of the easiest ways to get around, especially Europe and Asia, is by, well, literally walking out of a airport right onto a train and heading into downtown. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a first look here at what there is to do in the game. Keep in mind, by the way, that there's timetable operations where you can set things up for any type of uh, time or day. You can choose between the two trains, and then you can uh, change, like, for example, if you want it to be springtime or cloudy or rainy. I believe it's set to my in-game time, which is uh, nighttime right now, but I think you can uh, start your service anytime you want. So you can change between trains, make it uh, super snowy or... Uh, well, actually, in this case, we'll make it, like, super wet and uh, see it rain. But that's a thing for another day. We're going to do a scenario here today. We're going to go to explore and try a new scenario, which will allow us to do a 40-minute ice to meet you, which is great because we're taking charge of the ICE-17 service heading towards uh, Colm. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's get started. Welcome to Aachen HBF. You're assigned the ICE-17 service operating to Colm HBF. Open the doors to commence boarding. You've got it. Uh, we don't have control yet, though. Ah, now we do. Okay, over here is the door controls. Let's take a look at the plane, uh, the train first. Plane. It looks like a plane, actually. The front of it does. Now, we might be a little late to the destination, and I'm not here to, you know, get a perfect score and to be on time. I want to show you the game and how it sounds and feels, and it's great to actually hear another train coming in. That must be, yes, another ice train. There it is. Coming to a stop then at the station. Let's go ahead and open the right side doors then and allow passengers on board. Open right, close left. And that should open up quite easily. There we go. Excellent. So now everyone can get out of the train and hop on from our previous run, whomever was operating or whatever we were doing before. So we'll uh, get the orders then to proceed here shortly after it's been loaded up. We can take a little uh, look around the train while they're loading. When you start this train, by the way, there's a little cabinet here that you can open up to uh, turn the battery on, which will then allow you to uh, raise... Uh, the uh, I forget the names. I forget the pronunciation of some of these things, but the uh, the, the the pentagraph so that way you can connect the Canterbury. <laughs> I have no idea. I forget how to say them, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're going to correct me, you know how a train works. All right, we're going to close all doors. Looks like we've loaded up and we're now ready pr to proceed. Wait, actually, interestingly enough, I don't see the uh, pantograph uh, raised at all, so. Uh, set brakes to release and apply power to get moving. All right, let's go ahead and release and let's go. And away we go. So we're going to head to uh, Stahlberg, uh, which is uh, nine kilometers away. So we'll be making a few stops here. Usually there's a non-stop, which is a little boring because once you get up to speed, you just got to pay attention to the uh, speed limit. But we'll be stopping a few times here, so it should be pretty nice. So if you're German or if you've been to Germany, you may recognize, uh, well, obviously the train, but also the area. So take a look around and how does it look? Is it good? Is it accurate? You'll have to let me know. I certainly like it and think there's a lot of great detail here. And uh, as we get up to about 100 kilometers an hour, the uh, interesting thing is that uh, things will start whizzing by, but there's a lot of detail here. You can see all the cars down in the parking lot. You can see uh, trash and barrels and things sitting around. You can see all the uh, guardrails and stuff along the road, different homes, garages, trains uh, passing by us also on their own time and uh, lots of trees too and I think that may have been was that a river down there or a road look like maybe a, a, a road actually okay well we're speeding a little bit but again we're not here for style points we're here just to show things off so we'll be authorized to uh, proceed up to 120 kilometers here in just a little bit let's tap the brakes just for a quick hair there and actually now we're approved to go ahead perfect let's zip up to full speed 
Now, I don't think we're running on battery power right now, uh, which is interesting because the uh, as you w watch the back section of this train, whoa, you can actually see that things in the back are not raised up, which is a little weird. Here's the back end of the train as well. And we are clear to proceed. Excellent. Yeah, this feels like uh, fly it, it, this is much more simple than flying a plane. Essentially, uh, if you move lever back, train go slow. Move lever up, train go fast is basically all you need to really worry about here. We'll hit uh, minimum power here in just a moment as we approach 100 kilometers an hour. Excellent. And we'll be authorized to 120 here in just a little bit. So uh, seven and a half kilometers to our next destination, which is Stahlberg. And we have one kilometer until another uh, signal change where uh, we can actually increase our speed even greater now. And up to 140 at the next section. Things certainly look good. I like how the ice looks a little dirty underneath. As you would expect uh, bugs and grime and dust and dirt and other things kicking up from the tracks and surfaces below in order to brush up on the train. And since she's white, she's going to get awfully dirty very easily. Coming up on 140 here. Wow, things are just zipping by. Not much to look at unless you're looking out the sides of the train. Other than that, everything is pretty much just straight tracks for as far as the eye can see, or at least relatively straight. We are on a high-speed rail line, so she's not going to bend too much. This is no Shinkansen, but it's definitely a step closer towards what I want to see, which is uh, the Japanese Shinkansen and other high-speed trains. And we've already had high-speed trains before in the previous train sim world, which was exciting. Uh, in the form of the uh, Great Western Railway, I believe it was, for the British. And it was a really cool train, and it's nice to see the Germans as well. It'd be cool to see uh, the French, uh, I believe it's the TGV. That'd be really cool to see as well. And I'd love to also have more destinations to stop at airports and be able to see more above-ground operations and things. Wow, we're just cruising along. Oh, there's a hot air balloon. Would you look at that? How neat. Well, that looks cool. Now, one of the things, too, in this game is that if you don't like the HUD or if you want a greater challenge in terms of making it more realistic, you can actually drive by looking at any of the uh, on-screen uh, dashboard that you see right now. But, uh, for example, the points in the upper right corner or the clock in the upper left corner or really the um, info in the lower right corner, which is the most important, that shows us, for example, our throttle or current speed or current grade, that type of thing. You can turn that all off if you want to uh, have a greater challenge after you've learned all the trains. It's a lot to learn at one time. You can't learn all the trains perfectly in one day. Well, maybe you can, but you certainly need a little bit of time uh, to kind of learn how to start and stop the trains, both procedurally and also to get a feel of, like, for example, what eight cars of high-speed train really feels like versus a uh, hundred cars of coal on a American line, that type of thing. All right, we're just less than two kilometers away from our destination here. Never stopped one of these trains before, so it is going to be, uh, pardon the pun, a little icy. I may uh, shoot over the station or whatnot, but again, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Some of the other missions allow you to uh, drive around in the rain. Those are very beautiful. The, the rain physics water on the windshield looks quite realistic and uh, quite neat to look at too. We'll go ahead and start our braking procedures. And we'll need to slow down to 120. Four or five should do. Okay, go via location to Stahlberg. So we can actually continue on here. It's one of the things that usually trips me up in the game as well. I'll wait until uh, 9.37. I think we can continue on here. This is actually a little different than usual. We're about nine seconds early, which in Germany would be a federal crime. I'd be sent to prison, but we're good to go. Let's proceed. All right, Durin is where we need to go next. So no no actual orders to stop at the uh, stations, but we have to go to via location. 
That's usually a little tricky for me. All right, well, we're still chucking along. Oh, actually, some good industrial areas over there. Lots of sand and large uh, industrial equipment. Oh, this train is already, yeah, we're, we're already <laughs> pushing it to the max. There we go. Pop the brake a little bit. There we go. Wow, the skybox definitely looks a little flat, to be honest. Not too bad, though. Certainly looks like a beautiful day. And there are weather effects in the game to bring the clouds down and change things. I guess after Flight Simulator, I'm really uh, uh, particular about my skies. But this is a train simulator game where we're on the ground. We want detail near the train to be high. You can see a crane there in an industrial area. That's the type of stuff we want to see, right? All right, we'll enter the braking procedures again. Just a little slowdown. Man, the interior really looks cool. This, this feels more like a spaceship than a plane, actually. Um, a lot of tunnels here. Graffiti there. Still slowing down. We'll be down to 160. We're up to 160 here in about a kilometer. Nice. Yeah, this feels more like a spaceship than any other trains that uh, I've been able to conduct and drive in this game. Neat. 160 will be in less than a kilometer, about 600 meters, 16 kilometers away for Durin. And this should last about 40 minutes or so. I think it may be a gra graphical thing to not see some of that electrical uh, work there raised up, but uh, obviously the train wouldn't be able to move very far with just battery power. We would have pewtered out a long time ago. 15 kilometers to the next destination, and we're ready to go for full power. Or pretty close. When you're driving in conditions such as a rain or ice or snow, the wheel slip is a little greater, and you do have uh, your sand here in order to flip that on and get a little bit more traction. Well, we're about to go to plaid. Warp 9. Tell uh, Jordy that we need a little bit more power. I believe there is an option, there we go, to see the train zipping by like that. And there goes another train in the opposite direction. That's pretty cool. There we go. Wow, we don't seem to be going very fast from outside the train, but in the uh, driver's seat, we certainly are going very fast, it feels. And a little bit over the speed limit. There's a little bit of a decline in the tracks here. So we'll slow down just a little bit. Farm fields off to the side? Yes, I see looks... Oh, a lot of windmills over there. A lot of orchards and things. And now we're in an incline again. The ups and downs of the track are quite fun. And this does feel like piloting a plane more than I thought it would, especially this type of a train. 11 kilometers from our destination. Power at 50% uh, then. And we'll climb up and try to keep as close to 160 kilometers as possible. It's very... Uh, relaxing and peaceful to travel at this type of speed. There's really not much to pay attention to if you're only going via stations. And that's one thing I'll need to uh, get used to again in this game as well. It's been a while since I played Train Sim World, uh, aside from playing as the uh, London Underground so far. It's really fun to be able to uh, do a high-speed train and then oppositely a freight train. One, of course, being much more powerful and able to haul tons and tons of cargo. And these trains being much more nimble and fast and being able to sprint across the landscape at a very high speed. This one's maximum being 330 kilometers per hour. I don't know if there's any section of the track where I actually get to hit that, but you can see right there, V max 330 kilometers per hour. And uh, I would love to be able to hit that and see exactly what section of track we're allowed to go that fast. The train's zipping by there, cool. 
Now we are a little bit in a, in a downgrade, so we'll go ahead and back off on the throttle and apply a little bit of brake. I must say, this game is running very smoothly. I don't think I've had any problems with Train Sim World and Train Sim World 2 in terms of uh, how they how they function. Uh, Train Sim World is a very beefy game in terms of the size that you require in order to download it, but that's just because there's a lot of great detail with all these trees and things on either side and all the other things to look at from the driver's seat. We can also zoom in here. Uh, there's a lot of things that function. Everything from the uh, wind... Uh, windshield wipers to headlights to again the startup process which is contained in that cabinet over here uh, which we can actually open up and uh, close as well from from this position so lots of different things to uh, interact with if needed and it's kind of cool to be able to do that if you have to uh, from the driver's seat there's also parking brakes and other ways to bring the trains in for maintenance or to uh, bring them out of service which is almost like uh, bringing a plane into a hangar. I know I'm comparing a lot to Flight Sim, but I think they go together very well. You're comparing apples to oranges, but they're both fruit. And uh, just like apples and oranges, sometimes they go together well in a salad. And uh, these two kind of simulate both of the two worlds that I really love, flight and trains. Radio towers off in the distance. Farm fields over there. Kind of hard to get some neat shots though from a distance since all these trees are very close to the tracks. Well, it looks like we'll be authorized to hit up to uh, 200 kilometers when we get closer to Durin. And we won't be stopping this time. Oh, look at that. Football field. And a little uh, track. Wonderful. So if you uh, ride this line every day or if you're familiar with this line, how does it look? Again, I want to ask for all the Germans who've been on it or know of it, how realistic is it really? Or for anybody else who is uh, not particularly been on the line, but is a good fan of these types of trains. The first time I really got to be able to goof around with these trains was in uh, Transport Fever 2, which allows you to build uh, these tracks. I think actually that connects Frankfurt to everywhere else in the map, and it's kind of cool. And to be able to actually lay out the lines and see the trains run back and forth and set up the timetables is really fun. I really like that game a lot. And that's where it uh, made its first appearance, in my memory. But may have been present in games like Railway... Uh, sorry, Railroad Tycoon. What is this? Well, that is a cool-looking bridge. Huh. I've never seen a bridge like that before. That was cool. All right, we'll be authorized to go up to 200 here very shortly. Now we're starting to get a little bit of frame droppage from time to time. The game will briefly freeze. We are going very fast, so it is generating uh, landscape quite quickly. I will say that this is almost like, uh, maybe a little bit like American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck, uh, because it really simulates landscape up close. Though I'd say in the trains, we're almost closer to some of the things that we would be on a roadway. A roadway is usually uh, kept very clear. Things are much further away from the road than this because, you know, you don't want a car to careen off and smash into a tree. But here there's a little little less risk for that, and so trees are basically right on the side of the tracks. All right, now we're going to Horem now. This whole adventure should take about 40 minutes or so, so we're about halfway there as soon as we hit this next destination. Let's go ahead and get her full power and see if we can really stretch her legs. We're opening up to 250 here in a moment. Cool. And we'll back off that power. She's got a lot of power. I thought she'd struggle somewhere around 200 to really get up to that 300, but seeming to have no power uh, problem getting up to that power. Another train zipping by there coming from this station here, likely. Ah, wonderful. A little car being spotted going uh, across the bridge. Bringing the world to life. Be cool to see birds and things around. Flocks of birds maybe up overhead. Aircraft up in the sky. We did see the hot air balloons, so that might be in the game. 
to see animations like that would be a welcome sight. I just noticed our head is out the windshield. You may have seen that before. I would assume that, again, this is an early build of the game. I'm assuming that where we're sitting right now, uh, we're a little elevated above the seat so we can see out. And so that reflects on the character who is peeked outside. The fact that that man has his hat on is a real true feat. You may award German engineering for how efficient and uh, mechanical it may be, but the ability for that man to hold on to his hat whilst conducting a train at uh, nearly 250 kilometers an hour is pretty impressive. All right, 12 kilometers to go. Heading downhill at a 0 0.4. Probably speed up here shortly to uh, a little bit. Try to achieve that 250. Wow, we are very fast. Now, I can't recall how quickly the British rail line goes. I don't know if this is the fastest in the game, or at least in the series of Train Sim World. This might actually be a new milestone for us in terms of how fast we're able to go in the game. Let's back off on that power a little bit. Add a little breakage. All right, doing good. It's a nice, easy ride. You can also set up uh, routes and ride them as a passenger if you'd like to, and just look out the window and take screenshots. It is pretty to look at, and really is on par with Euro Truck and American Truck Simulator. The trees and the bushes and the layering of effects like that. You can see like a large growth, a lot of smaller bushes and then trees like that. So good detail, just like what I expected from Train Sim World. Train Sim World 2, on par with that. Nice. Love that roadway bridge there. Good. Very cool stuff. I thought those were solar panels for a moment, but it actually is uh, some large warehouses. They might have solar panels on top. Lots of bridges that are going over the top of this. All right, we're approaching uh, 950. I don't know exactly when we'll need to arrive. We'll speed up a little bit. Even faster now. Two hundred and fifty kilometers authorized, man. Watch out, Autobahn. Oh yeah, there's an incline here. It's very relaxing. All right, here's our destination for the next marker. So they'll likely tell us to wait, but essentially it just means we need to hold back a little bit. And we are only five seconds off the mark. Good to go. Stop at location at 959.30. Okay. We will arrive at Colm HBF very soon. 16 kilometers to go. This is taking much less than 40 minutes. Unless there's another... Ooh, that bridge is cool. Unless there's another destination to stop at after that. Or a shutdown procedure for the... Uh, for the train. Man, this is very relaxing. Eight minutes at least until our destination. We'll go ahead and coast a little bit. Apply some brake for the uh, grade here.
That's cool. Well, that looks nice. There's some large farm fields all around. No wonder we're able to go so fast. Large, wide open areas here. Yeah, we should be able, yep, we're good. 10 kilometers away, traveling at 250. We'll be there in no time, boys. Sky is pretty. I wish the skybox would look a little nicer, to be honest. I, I don't know. It looks pretty... I mean, it's decent, I, I must say. It's not It's not the worst thing I've seen in the world, but... I guess, uh, since I'm not driving a truck, I have a little bit more time to pay attention to it. Flight sim is an A-plus on that. Uh, actually, S-tier. Trucking sim is probably like a... Probably an A-tier, because I never really am paying attention to the uh, sky while I'm paying attention to the road. And uh, this game is probably about a, probably an A tier as well. I'm sure it changes based on what the weather is actually like to be said. But a minor thing, I don't think I buy games for skyboxes. I buy it for, for this, for speed. All right, 5.7 kilometers to go. Five and a half right now, good. We're closing in. Man, this thing is a dream. All right, we gotta really pull back there. Sometimes uh, w when a speed adjustment comes up, sometimes you're not able to see exactly where it'll be because it's overlapping another marker like that. So that's probably why I didn't see that one. We are, whoa, the lag, I can't, I can't control it if I can't, there we go. We really got to slow down now. We're entering the city. Or a city. Good braking here, though. Man, what, what's up with that lag? Jeez, it was all smooth. Frame rate, um, again, this is like an earlier preview version, so I hope they buff that frame rate out. I've never really had those kinds of issues in this game. Um... Except for with this train. I, I may have had it before on high-speed trains, but I don't remember this kind of uh, loss like that. But again, this could just be the game for its preview version. Wow, from 250 down to 70. Was it just me, or were those train trains changing color from white to, like, gray? That's a little awkward. Well, we'll make do with the uh, leg. Maybe it's because we're going so fast this train is so powerful. Here she comes across the bridge. Get ready to disengage that. Give her a little throttle. Okay, 1.5 kilometers to go. On a rainy day, this would be fun to do. In the uh, game itself, you'll have that windshield wiper going constantly. It'll be nice to see the if the rain actually goes up over the windshield uh, at a high speed to see how the rain actually responds to high speeds. Now we'll be authorized to go 160 again, but uh, with our destination being 1.1 uh, kilometer, we probably won't get up to that speed anytime soon. Actually, we got to go down to 40. So let's break. kind of just coast in here. Okay, so we're a few minutes early, actually. It looks like we can't pass. You shall not pass here. Yeah, I, did, I didn't see that until actually uh, a few moments ago with the... Uh, oh, I see that's actually in, behind that, not in front of that. Yeah, with all these different layers and stuff. We have a little bit of time to spare. We are early. So uh, passengers will be departing on the right. And uh, are there any 
monuments here that you recognize? Anything? Church looks familiar. I think this might be a part of... Oh, there it seems like they're building something there. Maybe upgrading a, another train station of some sort. Oh, here we are at the train station. Beautiful. Okay, we'll have to get ready to stop this. She won't stop on a dime, but it does stop pretty good. Oh. <gasps> Holy crap, do they have a bistro on that train? Oh man, I want to get on there. Actually, I wonder if our train had any sort of, like, onboard shop. I've been on Shinkansens before in Japan that have, uh, Hello Kitty Shinkansens and stuff. Imagine driving that. Okay, let's open the doors. Uh, that'll be right side. Yep. Wait. Or both. Uh, nope. Right side. Okay, so we'll switch that. Open right. Close left. And there they go. So the passengers in this game, in my opinion, are a little clunky. Sometimes you'll see them pile out in just large numbers. We're not really here to simulate passengers as we are, train, uh, you know, like the train itself. That's much more important than uh, the pathing of each individual passenger getting on the hundreds and hundreds of seats that are on board. So that's kind of nice that way. All right, so it looks like we will need to go to our next destination. I thought this ended at Colne, but we will need to wait until 10. AM, so we're a little early. So I think we'll just keep the doors open. More trains rolling in. Let's go take a look around. No, oh, we can't go outside the skybox here. Ah, but we can go out here. Oh, you can't clip through buildings, but you can do this though. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Large church there, the bridge that we'll be crossing here shortly to go across the river. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's close those doors. And there they go. Look at all the uh, little step folds up, too. Thank you for completing the run. Let's see how you performed. Oh, I thought we'd be going further. I thought that would turn green and we'd get to go a little, little further. Not too bad, though. Certainly room for improvement. And, uh... I like that. Uh, is there going to be a sc screen popping up here? Ah, here we go. Uh, let's see, a little speeding here towards the end, but and here, and actually, wow, a lot there. Oh, wow. it's okay. We still got the uh, medal of awesomeness. Sweet. All right, guys. Well, that is it for our uh, look at high-speed trains in the game. If you have any other suggestions or requests, make sure you go ahead and let me know what you'd like to see in the game next. I uh, We'll probably go back to the sand patch grade for fun and do a big old coal load up. Maybe we'll haul some coal in a storm. That'll be a lot of fun. All right, guys, thanks for joining me for uh, Train Sim World 2. Again, this is available August 20th on PC. And uh, I guess look elsewhere to see if it's coming for consoles, but not that I know of. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.